Hello, everyone, and welcome to Devotional Life with Paul and Jeannie. We're so glad that you're with us again, once again. And man, we kind of left it as a cliffhanger last time. This is exciting stuff. This is the 10th plague. God's told them what's going to happen. Pharaoh's going to let them go. Of course, this is a horrendous thing to have happen. The firstborn of every family and every animal is going to die. This is heavy duty stuff. And then uh, the nation of Egypt is going to give them their goods as they go. This is really a climax. What do you think? Uh, I think it's I don't I think it's sad. I think that as it was happening, the people of you know the the Jews didn't really know the full value of why God was requesting this. Yeah, because there's something more than just what's happening at the present. Because they obviously didn't know, fast forward the future, what was yeah. going to be required of the Messiah to take away our sins. Yeah, and, when you talk about the 10th plague, you're really talking about the cross. Right. Because, so, yeah, go ahead. Well, up to this point, they had been having their sins placed on that animal for sacrifice for their sins well, to be forgiven. I don't know that they've even done that. No, they haven't gotten there yet? <laughs> the The law has not been codified. Oh, I'm in a wrong They spot. might be doing that. Remember, Moses is the lawgiver. So they understood the idea of sacrificing, absolutely. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't actually given as a codified law. Here's what each person must do to have their sins covered. Okay. So, uh, so I think there's confusion, or at least a lack of understanding of what the significance is of what this is going to, you know, why God's having them do this. Yeah. Uh, I know he, he tells them specifically what to do, and then he goes on to tell the people that this is going to be done as a memorial throughout the generations. And so um, it, it was something for them to understand not only how God had delivered them from Egypt, but also what it was going to represent in the future. So I'm sure the Jewish people even now, those ones that still uh, recognize, uh, you know, what God had done in the past through Moses and all that, when, the, when they do come to know that Jesus is the Messiah, the light bulb's going to go on. Yes. The, the sins of the world are going to be put on the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ. Right, so a lamb is sacrificed. Right. You're probably going to read this. Blood is put on the doorpost and the lentils. Right. So in Exodus 12, Moses tells the people, in verse 21, he calls for the elders of Israel and says to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourself according to your families. Kill the Passover lamb. So he's calling it a Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that's in the basin, and strike the lentil and the two doorposts. So that's the top and the two sides of the right. doorpost, with the blood that's in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lentil and the two door posts, the Lord will pass over and not allow the destroyer to come to the house to strike you. And you should observe this as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land, which the Lord will give you just as promised that you shall keep this service and it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by doing this service? That you shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Egypt, of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their head and worshipped, and they went on to do what he asked them to do. Yeah. Uh, this night of all nights has a tremendous significance to it uh, for all of humanity. Because it represents for us, now that we know who the Messiah is, the Lord Jesus, forgiveness of sin. So even when Jesus is very first introduced by John the baptizer, John says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So in the Passover, what the picture is, death is coming, except for those families that have the blood 
over them and the death angel sees the blood and passes over. I, I don't know of a clearer picture of eternity. Uh, either a person will stand before a holy God in their sin and be condemned for all of eternity, or they'll stand before a holy God forgiven. Because of the Passover. Because of the Passover. The Passover lamb, who's Jesus, who died in your place as though he had lived your life. But then they have to respond by, like he gives the instructions here, stay in your house and don't come out. And then they'll pass over. So we're hid in Christ, the That's scripture right. says. So the only place the Passover can happen with our personal lives today and our sins being forgiven as if we're hid in Christ. They re recognize that we're a sinner and we turn to Christ as our Passover. And then we are forgiven and then we can go out and not right. have to experience the death, that the spiritual death. Right. So we're forgiven on account of the Lamb. Count of the Lamb. <laughs> and so... Judgment I'm not for, is passed over. Right. I'm not forgiven based on what I've done or, you know, what I haven't done mm -hmm. or, or who I am or what I've accomplished. Or It's strictly the gift of God to those who believe in the sacrifice of Christ for your sins. End of story. It's not by works of righteousness that we've done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us. Right. It's the, it's the tremendous grace of God. And, you know, sometimes we uh, may not completely understand why God's doing what he's doing or what we're asked to do in obedience. But as we grow, we come to understand it more and more and more. But we will never completely understand what, because we're not God, <laughs> until we get to heaven and we can look back. But these folks didn't understand it at all. All they yeah. knew is they were supposed to obey. Right. And if they obeyed and did what God asked them, even though they didn't have complete understanding, they would be protected. And I think there's times in our lives when God tells us to do something or not do something, and even if we don't understand and we think we might know better, we need to obey God and trust that He's doing it for a purpose and a reason, and we will look back someday and so see how we were protected because we obeyed the Lord. Amen. We have a good God that we serve, who loves us, who loves you. Listen to me, he loves you, and he wants to call you his own. Make sure that you are in Christ Jesus, and that you put your faith in Jesus being the substitute, taking the penalty of your sins. Father, we thank you so much for this time, and just, I don't know how many ways we can say daily and perhaps moment by moment we are thankful for the forgiveness of sin through faith in christ i ask a blessing on my brothers and sisters lord as they just enjoy the fullness of your grace for we pray these things in jesus wonderful name and everyone says amen amen god bless you